If you happen to visit the Royal Academy of Arts for this year's summer exhibition, among the thousands of works on display, you will come across a portrait of Girma, who is from Ethiopia's historic city of Lalibela. Girma was painted by London-based artist Catherine Chambers and is currently on display in the main room, Grayson Perry's Yellow Room, at the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition, which runs until the 19th of August. 250th anniversary year, the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition displays works in a variety of media and genres by both emerging and established artists. This year's edition is curated by renowned English contemporary artist Grayson Perry and will be the biggest in its history with over 1,200 works on display. We recently met Catherine at her studio in London to learn more about her work and her link with Ethiopia, which she now calls her second home. So I'm an artist. Um, my name's Catherine Chambers, but in Lalabella they call me Emma Bet, so they probably wouldn't know who Catherine Chambers is. <laughs> um, and I started painting about two and a half, three years ago now. But it was it was by accident that I ended up painting things related to Ethiopia. It wasn't planned. I was planning a trip from somewhere in North Africa down to South Africa. Um, but I'd already done a lot of North Africa, so Ethiopia was my, my starting point. And I planned to be there for two weeks and three days, I think, in La Labella, but I stayed for half a year. And I just made friends of like local family and um, now are people who I consider like family to me. So when I came back, it's the things that are in my mind. It's a place that's very important to me. So I started painting those people. That's, that's how I've ended up here. <laughs> Inspired by the environment around her and spending much of her time in Ethiopia, in particular Lalibela, naturally many of Catherine's paintings involve her friends. Um, this is Yeshi and her son Abby, and I live with them uh, every time I'm in Lalibela. So this is their house, but my home is just here. <laughs> uh, and this is a scene I'll see a lot, maybe not particularly always like this. This was a day when I caught Abby sleeping on Yeshi's leg and I was just like, oh, you know, it, it's a really nice scene. Um, but the Yeshi has become sort of like a, a sort of older sister to me. And her, her husband, Asifa, they've got three children, Yabsara, Nugus and Abby. Uh, and the first painting I did when I got back, the first portrait I did when I got back was of Yabsara, just behind you. Um, and that was just personally for me, not for anyone else. But as I, as I painted that, a lot of people were like, oh, this is, this is nice, this is different. And then I've continued to paint just when I, people that I respect or admire or... I have a connection with, so they are, they are real people, they are people that I spend half a year with and then come back here and then go back out there. Um, we live together and I look after Abby in the day and we play and in the evening I try, I try and help them with household chores but I'm a bit useless and they laugh if I try and do my own washing of clothes and stuff. But, um, this painting is part of a collection I guess that um, of, of works to do with how I spend my time when I'm in Lalabella. But they all link together. So this scene here, this chair, is the chair that Yabsara was sat on uh, when I first painted her. And that is the room that I first painted her in. So they all, all the paintings will have something that connects into the next painting. Um, and this, yeah, this is a real scene. What is Yeshi doing? She's cleaning. Uh, she's p sorting out the hops to make tala, which I think is a very interesting thing. That tala is like local beer, 
and every woman seems to make local beer and it's a real pride thing like to have the best local beer so, <laughs> so you end up drinking a lot to so not to uh, uh, offend anyone <laughs> um, and everyone's is different as well some's quite thick and frothy and some has lots of bits in and some is very thin and it's just you know out of just not much they make something that um, is identifiable to each household maybe and uh okay and then uh, can you tell me about this painting so this this one's different because normally my paintings are have come from me or i i've felt the urge to paint something this has been asked of me to paint this priest um, and also most of my paintings are set in La Labella, but this is in Addis. Um, and this priest, he'd gone, decided to be a priest, uh, lived in this church compound, I think for about 30 years, never leaving those grounds. Um, and he was a teacher to my friend, Bereket. Um, and Bereket came to me one day and was like, please, I really want you to meet this guy. Um, because this priest felt like he, he knew he was going to die soon. So he decided to go back to the town or village he'd come from and die there in where he'd come from, originally been born. Um, so to paint him and to keep him here in a way, requested... Did you ask him about his background what is when it? you paint him? Because if you look at him... Yeah. If you see his eyes, yeah. he has a blue eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did, how, how did you ask him? Well, I asked him. <laughs> uh, we, we have... Uh, eye is a very different, distinct thing for Ethiopians. Yeah. But this one is blue. Yeah, he's not so the did only... did you ask him? Yeah. I did, it, it definitely came up in conversation. I said, like, has this happened <laughs> through old age or something? Or what's... Yeah, ha, ha, um, and he said, no, he's always had blue eyes. But another coincidence, I like things that, coincidence, coincidences or things that have happened um, beyond control but link up. So this man having blue eyes, I met him on the same trip, I think, or the same long period of time I was out there. Oh no, in the same year, that I met another young boy in Ethiopia with blue, blue eyes. And I'd never seen anyone with blue eyes and then suddenly these two guys, and the young boy I, I, I wanted to paint, I still want to paint, I haven't got around to it, but um, then to meet this guy, it was, it was just a coincidence that I quite liked, but he just said he was, he was just born with them. In terms of colouring, mm. the Ethiopians, we always concentrate on different types of colouring. If you go to La Libella, yeah. you see the colours like the colors, these combinations, and this one, it's more European, Eurocentric. Yeah. These were the colors, like the red, well, the blue. How, how do you end up? With well, them? that's because those posters yeah. are, are bought, and I would imagine when they were first made was not in Ethiopia. They're just typical Christian scenes and posters, but... Um, the, even this post, and I didn't put them, they were in the room. So sometimes with my works, I'll work a lot from photographs, but they're not, I put the composition together later and we'll look at lots of different ones. So this poster was in the room, but it wasn't there. But I've, I wanted to give it significance because in it there's this fish. So I'm not very religious, but presuming that maybe St. Peter the Fisherman is in, is in this image. And just coincidentally, again, um, I'm quite interested in stained glass, which I've got a piece that I've just started learning how to do. Um, and I went to Ely Cathedral in England, and there was this stained glass piece of St. Peter the Fisherman, just coincidentally, that I thought was amazing. Um, and I, so then I, I, I did a drawing based on that, and I've also done some work based on that, and then I come and meet him, and behind him in this poster, I think is St. Peter the Fisherman. So it's just again this weird l line of things that have caught my attention or interest me um, that I put into my work. But and the technology is already there in Ethiopia. It's, uh, so yeah, no, for me it was very important to put a telephone 
mobile <laughs> um, and a television in because I think so I had my first show with Ethiopian based paint like location based paintings um, I think two summers ago now and a lot of people came to the show some Ethiopian people and some not Ethiopian people and the people that had no link to Ethiopia had never been there were like whoa this is really colorful we thought it was all dry and famine and <laughs> and then my Ethiopian friends were like happy that I was uh, representing life there as it is like people just living and getting on with things it's not so di it's different in some ways but not people think pl other places in the world are so far away when we're all a lot closer I think and things like technology bring you closer but there are phones and there are TVs so I didn't want to romanticize while at the studio one painting stands out the painting of a young girl Yeabzra this portrait is Catherine's first ever painting. But this one, this is Yabsara, and this is, I think, probably the most important painting I've done so far, and I can't imagine one becoming more important to me because she was the first portrait I painted. Um, Yabsara is Yeshi's daughter, and I live with her, and I teach her English, and she teaches me Amharic, and we lived just opposite each other, so every day, we spend all day together, and apart from when she goes to school. Um, and one day she was sat like this, it was her brother's birthday, and I just thought she was so beautiful. I had to try and paint her. And before that, I only did pencil work. So Yabsara is the reason I started painting, and there's the reason that all of this has happened. Um, and again, this painting holds a lot of, like, secret messages, maybe, to an Ethiopian. So Yabsara is wearing her best dress because... This indicates to me something's going to happen today. This was the special day, and it was actually her brother's birthday. The branches have been brought in from outside. Yeshi, her mum, brought them in to decorate the house. There's a bowl of popcorn, which popcorn you always have a buna or at a, at a celebration. This bag is a bag of teff. No one else is going to know what a bag of teff is. Um, this. This curtain is a very common curtain that everyone has in the houses there. And these shoes are her dad's shoes, which indicate that he's home, he's not at work. Again, because it's Abby's birthday. Um, but Yabsara is probably the one I'm most fond of, and we're very close, and so painting her meant a lot. And I've got lots of plans to paint her lots of times. I spend most of my time in the compound just following her around and taking photos of her. And she follows me around and watches me drawing. And then she draws pictures for me. So we have a nice, nice friendship. But he is called Nathan. He lives in London, was born here and brought up here. And his mum is um, Ethiopian and Eritrean. And uh, I met his mum here, and she helps me with my Amharic, and I help her with her English. And she's very... She appreciates my interest in Ethiopia, I think. Um, and she was like, why? Why doesn't my son take this interest? You know, he, she wants him to let, speak more Amharic. And I see it as... Um, my mum's side are Irish, and my dad's side are English, but I was brought up here. And I am interested in where I'm from, but um, he also wants to be an artist and his favorite artist is Picasso. So he came to my old studio and the paintings in the background, I painted based on his paintings. Um, and in my last show, I, as a surprise, I just quickly put this together and put it in the exhibition. So when he went round, this was there with two of his paintings um, to encourage him. This, uh, this, uh, can you tell me about this cross? The La Labella cross. Yeah. That's been given to me as a gift from the family that I live with. So it's uh, mainly, um, actually, I was actually lending it to another artist recently to paint. So that's, <laughs> that's why it's in the studio. But it's, um, it's, uh, it's a gift. Um, and the, this here. Yeah. Um, I collect lots of these because I just think they're really beautiful. Um, and one thing I like about them is they are 
representing stories. They're a narrative, you know, stories from the Bible. Um, so I've taken this format to begin some series of works, like this one that I'm just doing, which has a bit of a narrative to it, a bit more of a story. So this one is called, I titled it Mitta, because all young girls start off as Mitta. You know, you can say, nay Mitta, or yeah, you can, yeah it just, uh, it's before you, you know their name and you can address any girl like that. So all four of these girls are known as Mitta or have been known as Mitta. Um, and it's, I like in my paintings to have things that signal, oh, this is Ethiopia to, to an Ethiopian, but perhaps not to anyone else. So this girl, she has um, a cross around her neck and above the door, they've got holy water and bottles, things like that. Um, so this was actually, this was my second pa portrait painting. And uh, I was playing with ideas and colour and style, really. While Catherine appreciates the honour of one of her portraits being displayed at a major exhibition in London, she does hope one day to have the opportunity to exhibit her paintings within Ethiopia so that the people she paints can see their own portraits in real life. Um, it's quite interesting because when I first met Germa, or didn't meet him, just saw him. Lalabella is quite small. I stand out, obviously, because I'm a strange girl who spends too much time there. Um, and he stands out because he's a very strong uh, figure. And uh, his clothes are very striking. He makes a lot of them himself. And he's very individual. And individual people really, I'm attracted to them. You know, if they don't follow the crowd or they have their own style, I obviously interesting um so i wanted to paint him before i really knew him and uh, then i got to know him we knew of each other but we got to know each other and um i started to paint him again everyone i paint is because i want to there's no other agenda i i'm interested in painting the person um and then uh, these studios that I work in now, the other artists are very, very supportive and they love the work and they come in and they hear the stories behind every painting and, uh, and, and uh, about Ethiopia. And they, they suggested I enter for the Royal Academy of Arts summer show. So I did. Um, and he got in and then he got into the main room and uh, now he's been bought. Um, so he's... He's brought me a lot of uh, success um, and I hope he's a tailor so I have plans to commission him to make some clothes for me to sort of bring it back around. But you can see the work in the Royal Academy until the 19th of August and then I think he's, he's going to a new home which is sad when a painting leaves you but I'm happy that someone else sees the worth in him. Um, and Germ is very happy as well about this whole thing. So. Thank you very much.